We're going to take a look at expanding polynomial expressions, and in this particular one by polynomial, I actually mean binomial, where we've got a binomial times a binomial. As with most of my lessons, I'm going to start with a little recall here. The distributive property is a fancy way of saying distribution, which is a fancy way of saying expand. So a lot of times you're going to see the question say expand, and then it'll even say and simplify because after we expand, sometimes there's uh, like terms to collect. So when we say simplify, that really means collect your like terms. So we're going to start here with a question that is got that has zero variables in it, and it's simple. It's what is two times three plus four, but we're gonna take a look at this in two different ways. The bed mass way tells us to add the three and the four first, which gives us seven and do two times seven, which is 14. If we take a look at the distribution method and we take a look at distributing the two into this bracket, multiplying the two times the three, and then the two times the four, what we get is six plus eight. Now six plus eight is also 14. So the distribution method is a way of multiplying all of the items inside the parentheses or brackets by the item on the outside, which is, which is effectively a coefficient. So let's take a look at distributing a monomial into a binomial. We'll do two of these. So we've been asked to distribute or expand y times these values. So we're going to multiply y into this bracket and we're going to get y times x or you could say x times y if you're doing it alphabetically, and y times four, or four times y. Uh, typically, mathematicians and people who do math like to put their variables al alphabetically, so perhaps we should write it this way. In the next one, we've got a three outside the bracket, and we'll do a three times x, and a three times four, which is 12. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at what if both the y and the three we're part of a statement outside of the bracket with the x minus four. So let's combine those and let's expand y plus three, which is just a combination of the y and the three that we had above times x minus four. And we can take a look at this two different ways. In one way, we could say if I multiply y times x and minus four, so y times this bracket, I'm essentially saying y times this bracket. And then I can say I've got a plus three and I'm going to multiply three times this bracket as well, which is essentially what we did up top. We got an xy and a negative four y and we got a three x and a 12. Now we need to collect our like terms, but as you see, none of these terms are like, so we don't need to bother collecting those like terms. So that's definitely one way you could think about it. You could think about it as take the first term, times the next bracket and take the second term times the next bracket. And in fact, if this was a trinomial, we would take the third term times this bracket. Some other methods or some other teachers will say, instead of doing that, what you can do is you can multiply the y times both items in this bracket just like this. So xy minus four y, and you can multiply the three times both items like this and that would give me 3x minus 12. And we end up with the exact same final statement in one shot instead of, instead of separating it out like this. So it's really just a, a comfort level and a, whichever one you understand or appreciate more. And when you get really good at it, you don't have to draw these arrows. You can just go ahead and do the multiplications. All right, so let's practice that with a visual representation this time. So in this one here, I've been asked to find the area of a rectangle that has dimensions of x plus five. So let's say this is x plus five. So the idea here is that this side length here is of side length x. This side length here is of side length five. And then we have an x plus nine. So this is of side length x as well. And this is of side length nine. And so if we wanted the area of the large rectangle, what we can do is we can split it up into its smaller bits. And if we do the x times the x, x times x is pretty simply x squared. And if we do the x times the nine, x, which is this side length here, times nine, which is this side length here, is just simply nine x. And now if I do the next term, I do five times x, so five is right here 
times x, which is this side length, so we're doing 5 times x, that gives us the area of this bottom left-hand rectangle. That's simply 5x. And then I would do 5 times the 9, so 5 times 9, and you can see this is the side length of 5, side length of 9, which is 45. And if we combine all of this together, what I end up with is an x squared, a 9x, a 5x, and a 45. We would combine our like terms, of which we have right here a 9x and a 5x. I get x squared plus 14x plus 45. So this is just a visual representation of the methodology. You wouldn't draw this out every time, but essentially we did x times x, x times 9. That gave us these two items here and here, and 5 times x, 5 times 9. And that gave us these two items here. All right, now as with most things in mathematics, there are some special cases that we're going to have to take a look at. For example, in this example three here, we've been asked to expand and simplify this binomial times a binomial, but there's a negative outside the front here. So sometimes there'll be numbers outside the front, and when there's a negative outside in front here, effectively that's a negative one. So we can look at that value and say, okay, that that's a negative one right there could be a 7, it could be a 3, it could be a negative 18, really doesn't matter. But what we want to do is multiply that into the first bracket, not both brackets. Here's the thought. If I have 2 times 3 times 5, if I multiply this 2 times both the 3 and the 5, I've broken the rules of multiplication. I need to multiply the 2 times the 3 first, which gives me 6 and then multiply the 6 times the 5 to get 30. I cannot multiply the 2 times both the 3 and the 5. So we're going to multiply the negative into this first binomial to make our lives easier there. And negative 1 just really switches the signs on them. And now I will expand or distribute these values here across. And so I would do negative y times y. That's negative y squared. And I'll do negative y times 7. And that's negative 7y. 3 times y. So 3 times y is just simply 3y. And 3 times 7, which is 21. I need to simplify, which means collect my like terms. The negative y squared is still just negative y squared. It doesn't have any friends. And then the negative 7y and the 3y are the ones that are like terms. So that's negative 4y. And then we've got the 21, the constant on the end. And that is the expanded and simplified version of this first statement. Now, anytime you're watching these videos, I do recommend that if you see an example that looks challenging, you might want to try it on your own. Pause the video, write it down, and try it on your own. And that might be the case with this next one. In this next example, and it'll be the last example for this video, we've got quite a complicated statement or expression here where we've got binomials that have values on the variables. We haven't seen that yet. We've got a number outside the front, which is what I just showed with the negative outside the bracket. And now we've got this extra plus three on the end. And it's these kinds of questions where bed mass comes in and we have to do all multiplication before we can do addition and subtraction. So the plus three is going to be the last thing we do. Now we have to write it on every line, but we're not going to deal with it until the very end. So I do encourage you to pause the video and try this question out before I show the answer, which I'll do pretty much right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply the six into the first bracket, similar to how we multiplied the negative into the first bracket in the previous example. And so six times two, that's easy, that's 12, and the M sticks around, six times four. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24, and so now that first bracket is no longer 2m plus 4, it is now 12m plus 24, and it is still a contained package. That 6 got distributed into that bracket, but that bracket is still all getting multiplied times this second package. Then the plus 3 is sticking around for the ride, and I like to joke around that he's helping. He's, I'm helping. I'm here too, guys. And so now we'll distribute the two brackets like we've been doing in the previous examples. And so I'll multiply the 12m times both of these. And, you know, 12 times 5 is 60. m times m, that's m squared. 
I'm accidentally doing this in orange, but you know what? Let's just go with it. Uh, 12 times negative one is negative 12 M. And so now let's do 24 times five. 24 times five is 120. So that's plus, and it's plus because they're both positive, 120. And the M sticks around as well. And then 24 times negative one couldn't be simpler. That's negative 24. And then we have our little friend here, I'm helping, the plus three, who's been sticking around for the ride this entire time. And as you'll notice, when we do the distribution of the brackets times the brackets, or the package times the package, there's no brackets anymore, they've been distributed. Whereas in the first case, when I multiplied the six into this bracket, this is still a package that needs to be multiplied times the second package. Here we go, let's do the last step, which is simplify or collect our like terms. I've got a 60m squared. 60m squared has no other m squared friends. I've got a negative 12m and a 120m. So that's going to combine to make a 108m, 108m. And I've got a negative 24, and it now has its friend the plus three. I'm helping. And so that negative 24 plus three is negative 21. And we now have a trinomial that is an expanded and simplified version of this monstrosity that was at the beginning here. All right, with any videos that you watch, I highly recommend going back, watching it again, pausing, rewinding again, trying questions on your own. And of course, trying these questions through homework and practice. And if you have any questions, you know where to reach me.